the seven processes divide into direction, startup, initiation, stage control and product delivery, stage boundary and project closure. This bottom layer being the product delivery and here are four or five levels of management. Corporate program management above the project, project board directing, project manager managing and then team managers and team members receiving the commission of work packages and executing the work packages. And across that activity are the seven themes. The organisation, the who, the business case, the why, which is always accompanied by risk, the change, progress, quality and plans. So organisation starts in starting up a project. The initial element of organisation is to appoint the executive and the project manager and then build the team which is ratified by the project board and their first decision to authorise initiation. Initiation takes a fresh look at who's assigned to what roles in order to create the plans and the strategies, particularly ensuring that all of the activities that need to be performed to enact these strategies have been assigned an owner. As we get to the end of each specialist stage, we review whether we have the right roles and the right people performing them with the right amount of time allocated to them. So that's a periodic refresh at the end of every stage. At the end of the project, we disband the project team and the project board confirm that that has happened. Business case. It starts in outline as the justification in starting up a project that allows us to ask the project board at authorised initiation, is this worth the time and effort to plan properly? And if they say yes, then in defining the strategies and building the control pattern, we create a business case that properly reflects the costs that will be incurred both for the production of the products and for the control of the project and the degree of risk that we're suffering. And we refresh that at the end of each stage and the project board review it to decide whether or not they're going to authorise the project to continue. At any point in time that the project encounters an unexpected event, a risk or an issue, we consider the impact of those risks and issues on the business case. And eventually, when we arrive at the end of the project, we reconsider the business case, we pass on a benefits review plan that expresses how to realise the benefits. No conversation about business case is complete without also considering the risks involved. So as we consider the outline business case, we consider the known risks. As we review that by the project board, we consider the risks. As we build the proper business case, we consider the risks, but now in the light of the strategy for how we will handle risk. Every time we receive a risk or an issue, we are of course dealing with risk, and therefore every time we ask the project board for their advice, we're considering the risks. At every end stage, we consider the current risk profile. And at the end of the project, we consider whether risks that the project has been caring for are still relevant to the organisation and thus must be handed over to somebody who's going to follow the project. One other aspect of risk that we need to consider outside of the business case, we might consider business case risk to be in some way strategic. We must also consider the tactical risk of how we're executing and what we're doing in executing the activities that deliver the products of the project.